You know, being a full-time teacher is tough, but hey, at least I can afford manga again. Here is my August and September 2017 monthly manga picket video. Let's get to the manga. And here are the beautiful manga volumes. Unfortunately, I'm actually missing two volumes here. The first is One Punch Man Volume 12, which I'm currently lending out to a friend. And the second is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Volume 2, which is currently sitting on a classroom shelf. So I'm sorry about that. Those will be in the next video. So first, I have Attack on Titan Volume 22. And oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, technical spoilers on this cover. Um, I'll try not to talk about the cover too much. I'll just say for now that it's quite beautiful, especially compared to the ugliness of some past covers. Uh, that being said, though, I do think that the art in Attack on Titan is great. Don't get me wrong. Um, so Attack on Titan, again, fantastic series. The hype is real for the series. Trust me when I say this, it's super popular, but it's not popular in the sense where everybody just likes it because it appeals to everyone and it's kind of bland. And, uh, no, Attack on Titan is really great. Don't let the haters tell you otherwise. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, it's fantastic. And all of the questions that we have, as fans have had about the universe have, most of them have been answered by this point, and all of them have had really, really satisfying answers. So yeah, Tag and Titan, always a recommendation. Speaking of always a recommendation, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders Volume 4, uh, this time featuring Enya Ba, which if you don't know, um, her original Japanese name is Enya. So when they had to censor it, because Enya is the name of a famous singer, um, they instead called her Enya Ba, meaning basically Grandma Enya. So pretty cool bit of censorship there. They actually did a good job with um, that difficulty. And on the back, of course, they feature her stand, Justice. Very cool art. In fact, it's kind of interesting because um, this is Hirohiko Araki's new art. And if you look, I mean, there's there, there's India Buffer for you. Uh, yeah, her old self looks nothing like this kind little old lady seen here on the front. And actually, um, I read an interview. In fact, the interview is included in this book in which the reason why he drew her like this is because this is depicting the scene in which she's trying to trick the Stardust Crusaders. So she's actually supposed to look really kind on the cover. Very interesting choice there. Next, oh, Land of the Lustrous, my love. Highest recommendation on this table, guys. Seriously, check out Land of the Lustrous. I, I cannot recommend this more. Um, Land of the Lustrous is an incredible manga. Its art style is very unlike anything I've ever seen before in manga. Um, in fact, it, it's getting an anime adaptation very, very soon. And I really don't like CGI used in uh, animation. In fact, uh, I, I'm, I'm infamous for talking about the CGI in Sailor Moon Crystal. But I think the CGI works really well in Land of the Lustrous. And the reason why is because these characters are living embodiments of gems. So they're supposed to look fake. So the fakeness of the CGI actually makes this series look good, um, oddly enough. Uh, that being said, once again, no spoilers. But there's a revelation in this volume that really sets the tone of the universe. And it's just so brilliant. It's so cool. It's so mysterious. And again, I won't talk about it much, but trust me when I say this, wait for the third volume to give your opinion about this series. The third volume is where things get real. Trust me when I say this. If you already like Land of the Lustrous, if you liked volume one, you liked volume two, you are most certainly going to like volume three. For those that are kind of iffy about it, just wait till volume three. Trust me when I say this. It's it's brilliant. Um, while we're on Land of the Lustrous, I'm going to try to finagle my camera here. There we go. Um, so I have the Japanese volume here. I originally got these volumes in Japanese because I wasn't sure if it was going to come out in English. And I just wanted to give you a quick comparison. Like, look at this difference in quality. Like, the Japanese volume has, like, these really cool, like, crystal-y effects. Um, and you actually get to see more of the art. So you can see uh, Cinnabar there, which is pretty cool. Um, you also get a... Um, inside cover, which has new art on it as well. Very, very cool. Most of the inside art for Land of the Lustrous is kind of provocative, which is really weird. Um, oh, it's inside. <laughs> it's upside down. Whoops. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so, but yeah, you don't get that sort of treatment with these volumes. In fact, they kind of made up for it with this art. So you can see originally this character is on the inside flap and they included her on the outside for the American version or the Western version. I, I apologize. So great job, Konancha. Absolutely adore Land of the Lustrous. This is a fantastic series. Can't recommend it enough. Next is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time manga adaptation. And this was actually a Patreon sponsor request um, from 
Rio Mo Ao. I think that's how you say your name. I'm not sure. I'm including your name right here so <laughs> the viewers can make some sense of my butchering your name. Um, great recommendation. Originally, um, they recommended the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask manga adaptation. I'm actually going to take that out right here to compare the two. Uh, but I actually already own this volume because Majora's Mask is one of my favorite manga of all, uh, video games, that is, of all time. Um, Ocarina of Time. How do I put this the right way? So this was when Akira Himakawa was first starting to do Zelda manga adaptations. They were just getting their foots in the door. And these two volumes are kind of eh as a result. Um, they really, really got the hang of things in future adaptations. So, for example, Twilight Princess is currently ongoing, and they're doing an amazing job with Twilight Princess. Um, Ocarina of Time, though, it's kind of iffy. Um, there's a side chapter where Link and the Kokiri children are fighting against this, like, evil Great Deku Tree. Anytime they do original content like that, it's brilliant. Like, there's a side chapter in Majora's Mask where the same thing kind of happens. Um, in fact, it's like this non-canon story of how the Majora's Mask came to be. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, but as far as they're, like, adaptations of really in-depth stories like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask is kind of just average. Um, so for example, A Link to the Past, which, I mean, I love Link to the Past, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have as much story as these two games. Their A Link to the Past adaptation, which is also included in this Majora's Mask volume, is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's way better. Um, and that's not only because they had more experience by that point, but also because A Link to the Past has a bit more malleable of a story. Um, so... This is a high recommendation for Zelda fans who Zelda fans who adore manga, but other than that, I say play the games, you're gonna get a much better experience. Next is Princess Jellyfish. Beautiful series. Oh, I'm so glad to finally be able to afford volume five. Having a salary is just awesome. I just can't I can't I can't say it enough. It's just awesome. Um, teachers don't get paid that much, but at least I'm earning enough to afford some manga. So unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to read this volume. It actually just came in the mail today, which is why I'm doing this video. Uh, but I've read volume five, volume five. Once again, it's a roller coaster emotion. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, Princess Jellyfish leaves me with a sort of bittersweet feeling because I've always advocated for more manga written for adults. Princess Jellyfish is written for college age students and above. Um, and I love it for its just positive representation of otaku and nerd culture. It's a very positive series. But at the same time, there's so many of my young students who could really use a series like this. And I don't feel comfortable, especially because it is an older teen and above manga, putting it in my classroom. So it leaves me with a somewhat bittersweet feeling. Anyway, Konancha is doing an amazing job with these volumes. The quality is super nice, uh, for, especially for an omnibus. And I can't recommend it enough to people who enjoy shoujo. Definite recommendation. Next, of course, is my love story. And my love story, must we say goodbye? I don't want to leave you. <laughs> oh. um, so, yep, the story of Takeo is, is done. Uh, it's bittersweet, once again. Um, how do I put this the right way? Because I don't want to seem overtly critical when I say this. But this is probably the weakest volume of my love story. I was expecting a lot more from the ending. And again, I'm not going to spoil exactly why. I just thought that it ended on a very odd place, leaving me wanting more. I feel like this story isn't finished. Like, it didn't end where I thought it was going to end. And again, I don't want to say what I thought it was going to end like, because, again, major spoilers. Um, I want to know what you think. Please put in the comments below, did you enjoy the ending? Um, I really want to know, and I might actually give my thoughts in the comments too. So if you're particular about spoilers for this series, please don't look in the comments for this video. And um, yeah, I want to know what you think. Next is Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, and I actually can't say just why I ordered this volume yet. I will be revealing it in a video in the future, don't worry. Uh, but there's a particular reason. I also had to watch the uh, anime version of this. And... Brilliant comic. Um, if you don't know about this comic, it's uh, what's called a four. Oh, whoa, goodness! Uh, it's what's called a four coma. A four coma is a manga usually reserved for gag manga. Uh, it's four panels, kind of like our Western newspapers, where there's three or four panels of funny information with a punchline usually delivered at the end. Um, this manga is about a girl who has a crush on this boy in her school, and she ends up finding out that the boy is actually a shoujo manga artist. And she becomes his assistant and meets his other assistants and shenanigans happen. And it's really, really funny, especially if you're well-versed in the manga industry. So if you know how the manga industry works, this, this, this manga is just hysterical. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, but Nozaki Kone himself is a really, really funny character. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get any mo more volumes from this point on because I was pretty satisfied with what the anime gave me. Um, but 
eh, it's a recommendation for me, especially if you're not only into shoujo, but also into how the manga industry works and you want to read a series that kind of pokes fun at that. Next, glorious One Piece. Yes. Oh, so beautiful. Big Mom, I love you. Big Mom is such a great villain. I was so hyped for Big Mom. I've been hyped for Big Mom ever since Fishman Island, and she has just exceeded expectations as a villain. I absolutely adore her. She is fantastic. Uh, Her backstory is intense. It's great. It's deep. um, And she is a threat, like just the very definition of a threat. And this cover is just so, so beautiful. Um, One Piece is always a recommendation for me. Once again, as I say always, if the volume count scares you, uh, yeah, I don't blame you. Volume 83, ow! Um, But other than that, um, high recommendation for One Piece. One Piece is finally at a point where it's just kicking every other shonen manga's butt right now. Um, Dress Rosa was kind of a weaker arc, but now, man, Oh, Whole Cake Island is such a fantastic arc. We're not finished with it quite yet, so I can't quite give it my seal of approval. But as we are right now, man, if you've been disenfranchised from One Piece, get back into it. You don't want to miss what's going on. And speaking of One Piece, I have this interesting volume, volume 85 from Hong Kong of all places. So my good friend Shark, I've known him for about 10 years, um, gave me this volume. Trying to fix the little... (laughs) little ad on the bottom. There we go. Um, My favorite part about this volume, though, if you look down here, uh, it's got this little warning sign. Warning, this article contains material which may offend and may not be distributed, circulated, sold, hired, given, lent, shown, played, or projected to a person under the age of 18 years. Uh, Oops, I I guess I'm projecting it to an audience right now. Uh, 18-year-old, shield your eyes! Um, No, but in all seriousness, I'm pretty sure they just put that on like every manga volume. Um, So I'll take this off so you can see the full cover. But yeah, this is a pretty nice surprise for my friend Shark. Um, He has been really cool about donating really fun gifts from the different places he visits. Um, Once again, this is volume 85. It doesn't, well... You know, I can't read this. Um, It doesn't say it in English. Um, But the really cool thing about foreign volumes is that if you open it up, you can actually see on the inside. Look at that. Brooks, little soul power. It's actually paying demand. Very cool stuff. Um, Once again, big thank you to my friend Shark. This was was pretty cool. Pretty awesome. And it's a nice preview of what we're going to get. Um, I believe this volume is coming out for us in 2018. We'll have to be patient. Speaking of patience, Puella Magi Tart Magica. Ooh. Oh, I'm just so frustrated by Puella Magi Tart Magica because it's such a good story. Um, it's obviously a um, Madoka manga set in the times of Joan of Arc. It's about her as a magical girl. It's probably one of the coolest things I've read in a long time. But the fact that this volume came out a year after volume three with such a complicated story with so many characters and things you had to understand... Oh my gosh, I had to reread volumes one, two, and three just to get what was going on in this volume. And it wasn't a pleasant experience. I don't like to reread things just to understand things that I should be able to comprehend. Like these volumes have been coming out a year separate from each other, and it's been really frustrating. Um, Fortunately, volume five is coming out in November, so I don't have to wait that long. I'm probably not going to have to reread these volumes again just to understand it. But man, like the fact that I had to go out of my way just to reread three volumes to understand this one, yeah, not cool. Um, I understand, once again, this is probably not Yen Press's fault. This is probably uh, the fault of um, the publisher in Japan, but still, it's just really frustrating. So finally, enough of the manga, right? This, is, this isn't a manga channel, this is a video game channel. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I got some games, the first one being Destiny 2. Oh, I'm a diehard Destiny fan. I It's a guilty pleasure for me, but it's also a way for me to connect with some of my college friends. Um, I live in a different state than the one I went to college to, so a lot of my college friends I don't even live close to anymore, so we play a lot of Destiny to stay connected. And this game, let me tell you, is way better than the first one. Story-wise, gameplay-wise, pretty much everything-wise, except for the customization. There's been a lot of controversy because they ended up blocking some of the customization behind um, basically DLC transactions, so like you have to pay to get better increases of like customization items, which is really, really a shame. Uh, but other than that, I love Destiny. Uh, I play a hunter, and I'm also a part of Dead Orbit. Edgelords unite. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a great time. Then I have Theatre Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call, and this is a sequel to Theatre Rhythm Final Fantasy. I absolutely adore the first one, and I had to get this one when I heard that music from Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles was in it. 
Um, if you don't know about Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, it was this really obscure GameCube game, and I absolutely adored it as a kid. I loved the music in it especially. So I'm really, really excited to have this game. It was only $13 too on Amazon. About $13, that is. Um, so it was a steal for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you especially to my Patreon supporters. You guys are incredible. Now I want to hear what you picked up. Please put your lists in the comments below of all the manga you picked up in these past two months. Please also put your video links to any uh, monthly manga pickup videos you may have put on YouTube. I definitely want to support other manga channels on this platform, especially because as a full-time teacher, I can't always post videos. Speaking of which, I gotta get back to grading. Until next time, this is CJ, signing off.